The mood music, just like the crooning at this local Conservative lunch, seems to have softened. A Brexit deal says Brussels and Number 10 could be in the offing, just days ahead of a crucial EU summit. But patience for Theresa May among the grassroots here in Enfield is growing thin. They want a deal on British terms, not one that ties us to the EU for years to come. It seems now that we're sort of crumbling a little bit and then we're going to have to back down and get p p possibly more of what they want than we would like. I think she's doing as good as she can as long Do as she doesn't she's... sell us down the river. She should have gone straight in. We've got a lot of power. We're a country of pride and I think she's let us down terribly. No surprise the former Brexit secretary feels the same. Writing in the Sunday Times today, David Davis urged the Cabinet to exert their collective authority, saying a deal that keeps the UK in a customs union with Europe indefinitely was completely unacceptable. Rather like an awkward uncle at the dinner table, David Davis's intervention was designed to upset the party just days ahead of the crucial summit. It's not yet clear whether there will be a pre-summit dinner in Brussels on Wednesday night or even if Theresa May will get an invite. Certainly as the Prime Minister sits down with the other 27 EU leaders, she'll know that getting the EU, the hardline Brexiteers and her Northern Ireland parliamentary partners to all stomach the same deal will be a tall order. The current Brexit Secretary Dominic Raab dispatched this afternoon to Brussels for urgent talks. If a deal with the UK cannot be agreed, the EU has proposed to keep Northern Ireland inside the customs union as a backstop to avoid a hard border until a deal can be reached. Theresa May has said splitting the UK will never happen and would rather see the whole country stay in until the issue is resolved. Brexiteers see that as keeping the UK in the single market through the back door. Facing the Sunday morning broadcast round, the Health Secretary Matt Hancock said any customs union extension for the UK would be temporary and time limited, but refused to put a specific time limit on the arrangement. There's different ways to ensure that something is time limited. Uh, and Not really. Uh, uh, there, are, there are different ways of doing that. Okay, well, for give instance, me another way then. Well, for instance, you can uh, set conditions under which, uh, at the point at which uh, the uh, arrangements come to an end, the Prime Minister is absolutely okay. rock solid behind getting that uh, deal, including ensuring uh, that the backstop arrangements are temporary. So time, long term and short term, is suddenly centre stage. While Brexiteers wrangle over end dates and backstops, Brussels says it wants a deal to be agreed in outline by this evening, allowing Theresa May to put the agreement to a no-doubt fractious cabinet on Tuesday. After two years, the clock is ticking. Well, joining me now is the former Minister for Trade, Greg Hands. Now, you were a Remainer, but in the process of being a minister, you have ended up in a position where you are now against the UK staying in either the customs union or the single market. So if Theresa May comes back with a deal in which the backstop is the UK stays in the customs union, you'll vote against it? Well, uh, my position, Christian, uh, is notwithstanding the fact that I voted Remain in 2016, uh, my position has always been clear that uh, being in a customs union with the European Union, but outside of the European Union, would be the worst possible uh, policy choice uh, for this country. Now, I'd be willing to accept that on a temporary basis How or a time defined. Well, bear in mind at the moment, with the withdrawal, uh, with the implementation period, we have already agreed to be in effectively the customs union up to December 2020. Now, bear in mind that is already four and a half years after the referendum. That is a terribly long period of time. So, is that your deadline? I mean, you know, that you've got two years to sort out a deal, and if you haven't got a deal, well, my position then is December 2020 is already a very long period of time. That's four and a half years uh, after the referendum. I think the British people would probably would stretch their patience to go beyond December 2020. And, and is this what all your colleagues are saying? I mean, Mike, my, my no, well, people, there's a, there's a, a you, wide, won't, you won't uh, tolerate this kind of agreement. 
There's a wide, there's a variety of views uh, within the party, as we know, about the right kind of agreement. Uh, I think there's a preferable way of doing this uh, to the Chequers proposal, uh, and that is to seek a comprehensive free trade agreement, a Canada-style free trade agreement uh, with the EU. I think that could work for both sides in this case and find a way using technology. I don't think it's beyond the wit of man or woman to find a way to deal with the specific problems of the Northern Irish Republic, Irish border. Well, the, the Irish government says this is just nonsense. I mean, the Irish foreign minister told me last week the idea that this can be solved with technology is nonsense. Well, the European and it's, it's only uttered by people who don't well, understand the border. Uh, OK, well, the European Union itself has proposed using technology uh, to police a different customs border, in this case, a customs border between Northern Ireland and the rest of Great Britain. Now, if the European Union thinks the technology can be used for that, then it ought to be able to be possible to overcome those issues and use it for the land border between Northern Ireland and the Republic. And Thereby, that would then allow us... I mean, Brexit is really all about a set of challenges and a set of opportunities. I think we need to deal with the challenges but also leave open the opportunities. And the opportuni opportunities are there in the UK pursuing an independent trade policy but it's not on in the future. I mean, Theresa May's point when she stood up in public was people like you keep saying we should pursue a Canada plus, plus, plus deal. It's not on offer. It's only on offer for Great Britain, not for the United Kingdom. You know, it, it, the European Union position on, is, on it is to carve out Northern Ireland from that well, deal. Well, my understanding is the European Union uh, uh, said a Canada deal was an offer, uh, so long as there is a solution uh, to the backstop uh, problem. Which there I'm, isn't. I am so, well, I'm saying, and I'm, I think many people in the House of Commons and many people in the Conservative Party think that it's perfectly possible to find a solution to that problem. Given a, 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 a dollop of goodwill on both sides, uh, the UK and Ireland and the European Commission coming together to find a solution to that problem. But, but, and that then allows us, the UK, to pursue an independent trade policy, uh, which I think is an incredibly important aspect of all of this. But, I mean, this is really weird because, you, you know, the British government, Theresa May, says that's not possible. The European Union says that's not possible. But there are a group of people, you're one of them, in the middle saying, well, it is. I mean... <laughs> You know, if the two sides in this negotiation think your technological idea for the Northern Ireland border is fairyland, it's not going to happen, is it? Well, as I've, as I've already said, the European Union is proposing themselves to use technology for an Irish sea border. That's the first thing. Uh, secondly, there's been some serious studies done on how that technology uh, might be done by different groups, uh, uh, looking at uh, the feasibility of that, and I think it is possible to do that. Uh, and I think we, that's what we should be discussing with the European Union at the moment, is finding a better solution than the Czechs' so, proposal, so you which have actually already been rejected. Like David Davis, that the Cabinet should face Theresa May down if no, she comes uh, well, back with well, a backstop that is no, I, I, contrary to the, what, 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 what I am saying. saying is I think there is a better policy choice. I think the, policy, the, the public mind. policy choice of Chequers, I think, can be improved on. The public policy choice of staying in a customs but union three but being days outside of the EU before, is also a poor choice. With three days before Theresa May goes to Brussels, she has not changed her mind. She is showing no sign of changing her mind. What are you going to do in that scenario? Are you going to change her? Well, uh, we'll have to see what, uh, what agreement is actually negotiated and we'll have to see what the vote is. I mean, the vote will be, of course, on the withdrawal agreement uh, plus a political declaration attached to it. So the vote is not necessarily directly on Chequers or a Canada-style FTA or a Norway-style this, that or the other. We have to look at what the agreement is that will be reached. I remain confident that an agreement will be reached uh, between the two sides because it's fundamentally in both sides' interest to reach that agreement. But, of course, it's not saying that it is impossible that there could be a no-deal situation. That is also possible, but I think it's unlikely. Do you think David Davis would do a better job of this negotiation? There's rumours well, that some people want him as a caretaker prime minister to take it's, over. It's a very... Look, we're all agreed that it's a very difficult negotiation. But you are closer to I've, his position, aren't you? I, and you agree a, with him rather than Theresa May. I've got a lot of admiration for how Theresa May has approached uh, the overall job of doing the negotiations. Uh, however, I do think there is a better option that is available to her... Which is David Davis's out, option. Uh, which is the option of having a Canada-style free trade agreement and using technology so why not and just other ways to... ditch her and get him to do it? Well, uh, well, why are you all being so coy about... Uh, OK, this? because it's all about the negotiation and going into a negotiation, as we are, with the European Union and trying to seek to get the best solution is not uh, about the leadership of the party. No, it's about the idea, and she fundamentally disagrees with you, and you well, agree with David Davis. Uh, 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 
it's, it's an evolving situation, Krishna. I'm just putting my uh, perspective on the table as the former trade minister that it should be perfectly possible to come to a good free trade agreement with the European Union and solve the backstop. Greg Hans, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.